Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the fascinating little Carton Mini 6 telescope. This is a 60 millimeter telescope with 360 millimeters focal length, so it's an F6 telescope. That is extremely fast. This is an acromat now, this is not an apochromat. So this is an ordinary acromat, very, very high speed, very small. There was a market they were shooting for, and that was people that wanted to buy something really, really small, really, really portable, like you carry around in a, in a suitcase kind of a thing, and do astrophotography with it. Um, and this would uh, satisfy that part of the market. Now, there are two versions that I have here. Uh, this is an earlier version, I believe. This one's from 1983. Uh, at least it was first shown in magazines in 83. This one's from 1985. This is on an equatorial mount. This is on a, uh, this is actually a standalone little set with, uh, you supply your own tripod kind of a thing. So, both of these scopes are really interesting. They're pretty high quality. For an acromat, they're very high quality. The optics are, are very good, but they, they have a a lot of color, folks. You just can't get away from it. Here's the Carton Mini 6, about 1983, 1985, something like that. Here's the Takahashi TS65P. It's a very similar telescope. I think you could uh, easily be confused by them in photographs, especially. This one is 65 millimeters, 500 millimeters focal length. It's a triplet semi apochromat with really, really sharp images. This is a kind of an ordinary, kind of fast, uh, pretty good quality, but not great quality telescope. This is a, a not, not anything comparable. Both of these came in small suitcase kind of carrying cases. They have similar short kinds of mounts designed to be very, very portable. Um, I think that Carton was copying this wonderfully successful, revolutionary TS-65P from about mm, seven, eight, ten years earlier. The operation of the scope is very straightforward. Um, it's just got a couple of standard locks here. This, the declination slow motion is just a tangent, which is fine. It's got a short tangent arm in there. Gives you plenty, not a problem. This is the throw on the focuser. It's maybe an inch and a half or so. Got a focuser lock on it. This is a dovetail system, similar to a modern Vixen, but kind of backwards because this goes in from front to back. That's all it is, that's all there is to it. It's really very nice. One of the most interesting things is this. The finder is a three point and there's a spring loaded teal here and you're all familiar with these you've seen these before but I think this is the first one I've seen on a classic scope this is also much better much firmer than the modern ones that I've seen anyway so it's got it's got like a horizontal and a vertical adjustment very very nice well executed here's a little mini six all set up for a piggyback astrophotography you put a ball head on the special attachment point here on top of the clamshell and with the ball head you can reorient your camera wherever you want pick out a guide star you guide through the main eyepiece and then you can just hand guide probably with a 50 millimeter lens or so hand guiding would be sufficient if you're very careful so you can hand guide a shot for 15 or 20 minutes on film okay here we have the mini six set up next to one of its competitors. Now this is a substantial competitor. This is a Takahashi. This is a Takahashi, very quick, light, portable, kind of a, a, a quick take it out kind of a mount, something very small. You can piggyback a camera on here. You have a little 40 millimeter guide scope. It does everything that the Mini 6 will do. This had been around, or its precursors had been around for about 10 years before the Mini 6 came out, at least as far as I can tell. Which of these two mounts is better for us for photography? Well, this scope here has doesn't have a polar alignment scope. It does, however, have this scope. The finder is uh, 
specially designed theoretically for polar alignment. It's not a really great system, um, but uh, apparently it could be used to get at least sort of close. You align this with the uh, polar axis, right? So you have to do some fiddling around to get this all aligned with the polar axis. And then once you have that, the, the special finder here allows you to uh, polar align within maybe a degree or so, sort of close, um, which would be sort of close enough for some exposures with the wide angle lens and so forth. So anyway, this was a, this is somewhat compromised, but it does have this. This bolt here allows you to adjust the latitude of this thing very, very precisely so you can very nicely and easily align the altitude of this thing. Uh, and then, of course, you're still a little bit, uh, you're, you're going to be a little wonky with getting the azimuth set up right, but, but that puts you closer. This mount, on the other hand, it has a wonderful and superb polar scope right behind this cat. There's a polar alignment scope in there, which is great. But in order to do the polar alignment, you have to adjust this bolt here. You don't have the kind of uh, push finger device that you have here. So you're stuck adjusting this wrench like that. And good luck, heaven help you. It's going to be really tricky. I mean, you might be able to do it sort of close with the right leverage and you know, just everything is just right. You might be able to do it, but it's going to be a bit more tricky with this mount than with this one. So I don't know which one has the advantage. I would say they're about six, one half a dozen the other. Neither one is perfect. In its traveling case, this scope weighs about 22 pounds. Okay, let's open it up and see what's inside here. First of all, here you have a couple of, uh, well, let's see, instruction manuals how to use the telescope kind of a thing. All right, on this side, we have, this is fairly light because it's styrofoam. And on this side, we have, and on the other side, we have, on the other side here, we have, Check out what I have here in this little box that apparently time traveled from 1983. It's just almost like it was brand new. Here in this box we have, first of all, some instructions about how to use a Mini 6. A box. We'll open that later. Here, look at this. This is a beautiful leather case. Man, oh man, first quality, top notch. In this little side pouch here. Finder. Here, we have the scope. There we have the Mini 6 in its little travel pouch. Let's take a close look at what's in the box. In the box here we have, for starters, there's one tail piece for the scope. Another tail piece. This tail piece is undoubtedly a camera adapter. Here we have a star diagonal, 12 millimeter Kellner, and a six millimeter ortho. You'll notice that this version of the scope comes with a poro prism. It also has an 18 millimeter Kellner installed. Carton used the same cute little mount with larger telescopes, including this 60 millimeter at F900. They also produced the Mini 6 in a couple of different colors.
I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Carton Mini 6 telescope from the 1980s. Thank you for watching.